Next time you've got a taste for tuna, you might want to take another look at the can, because there's something very fishy about this classic seafood. From tuna salad sandwiches to tuna casserole, plenty of classic comfort food dishes rely on canned tuna. Fish in general is considered to be a healthy food. The FDA recommends that non-pregnant adults eat at least 8 ounces of seafood a week, and grocery store canned tuna is one of the easiest types of fish to prepare, since it's already cooked. But there are some canned tuna options that are healthier than others, and it mostly comes down to mercury content. And a new warning this morning about a canned fish. The FDA says that pregnant and breastfeeding people should eat only two to three so-called best choices fish per week, or just one serving of good choices fish. Of the canned tuna options out there, light canned tuna contains the lowest mercury content and is therefore considered a best choice fish by the FDA. Then, you've got canned yellowfin tuna and canned albacore, which are considered good choices. As for children, the FDA simply recommends eating two servings a week from the best choices list and doesn't offer guidelines for how many servings of good choices fish is considered safe. Big Eye Tuna is best avoided by these sensitive demographics because it contains among the highest levels of mercury. If your family eats tuna frequently and you have kids or are pregnant or breastfeeding, it might be best to leave the canned albacore and yellowfin on the shelf and instead opt for canned light tuna. So why does the mercury content between different types of canned tuna vary? Well, it depends on the size and lifespan of different tuna species, as well as how mercury generally tends to accumulate in living things. While mercury is a naturally occurring element, pollution can increase the mercury content in bodies of water. Plants and animals at the bottom of the food chain absorb that mercury and are eaten by small fish, which are eaten by bigger fish, which are then eaten by the biggest fish. But the mercury never goes away. In each of these instances, it simply gathers in the body of the next predator. That's even true of us humans too, when we eat fish with the high mercury content. That means that the larger a fish is, the more mercury it likely contains, since it has spent its life consuming a large quantity of smaller, mercury-filled fish. It also means that older fish tend to suffer higher levels of mercury. Because big-eyed tuna is large and has a long lifespan, it contains more mercury than other tuna species, making it one of the FDA's choices to avoid. Thankfully, most varieties of canned tuna are safe to eat for many people, but pregnant or breastfeeding people and children who need to be more careful about how much mercury they ingest are safe safest sticking to canned light tuna, which has the lowest mercury content of the various canned tuna options. Of course, the good news is that it's usually the most affordable too. Importantly, mercury can be particularly toxic to children. In some areas where local populations rely on substance fishing for most of their diet, instances of cognitive impairment due to the consumption of mercury-containing fish have been found to be as high as 17 out of 1,000 children. Even smaller fish and shellfish living in waters polluted with mercury from industrial waste carry a high risk. Because children are still developing, exposure to a toxic metal such as mercury can have adverse effects and cause impairments to the central nervous system. Symptoms can include tremors, memory loss, neuromuscular effects, and more. Children's small stature also means that smaller quantities of mercury have a bigger impact on kids than they would on adults. As it happens, eating seafood is actually the number one way in which children are exposed to organic mercury. That's why the FDA is so careful to recommend children under 11 consume just two servings weekly of seafood from even the best choices list. Meanwhile, prenatal mercury exposure has been linked to lower IQs, lower test scores, neurocognitive deficits, and neuromotor disabilities. That's why pregnant and breastfeeding people are instructed by the FDA to eat only two to three servings of fish from the best choices list weekly, or just one serving from the good choices list.